Hello, 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 and welcome back to Money Sprinkles. Thank you for returning to my channel and watching my videos. I truly appreciate you for subscribing to my channels, and I am grateful for everything that you guys have done by watching my videos. Again, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to like and subscribe to my channel. Today's video is going to be about beginner credit cards. I hear this question quite often, and I want to make sure that the information is out there with regards to what type of credit cards you should be getting as a beginner, okay? And when I say a beginner, a beginner could be a student, a beginner could be an adult that never had a credit card, a beginner could be a young adult that's exploring with credit cards, a beginner could be anybody that is coming back from bad credit and decided that they never wanted to have a credit card. So that is what I'm gearing this channel, excuse me, this uh, video to this week. Um, because beginner's credit cards is important and I feel that you should know the, the do's and the don'ts before you start applying for these beginner credit cards, okay? But without further ado, let's get ahead and get started with today's videos. As I stated earlier, it's all about the beginner's credit cards and what you should or should, or should not do, all right? So let's first start with credit card number one. It is the built MasterCard. This credit card is an outstanding credit card. They currently have data point of Experian and you have to be in the high, uh, you have to be in the 700s to apply for it. The one thing about the built MasterCard is that you could actually earn points for paying your rent with this credit card. This is the only credit card out there right now that I know of that you could pay your rent with it, okay? So this is kind of like a gem credit card to have. Um, the second credit card that I would definitely recommend is the Bank of America Preferred Rewards Program. The data point for that is they pull from Experience, TransUnion, or Equifax, and they are based on your geolocation. So if you're in the East Coast, normally it would be um, Equifax. If you're in the middle, uh, Midwestern of the U.S., uh, more than likely it'll be Experian and TransUnion for the West Coast, but don't don't take that with a grain of salt. That is just um, what seems to appear the norm on how they pull. But Bank of America is basically based on your geolocation. The credit score to apply for the BOA Preferred Rewards Program should be about 650 plus. And as far as banking relationship is a must with Bank of America. And again, this is all personal beginners credit cards, not business credit cards, okay? Um, the third would be the city custom cash. And currently the data points is they pull from Experian and from Equifax. And you could be have a credit score in the 700s. And then you have the Chase Freedom Flex, which is data points, Experian and Equifax, credit score in the 700s. And your Discover It, currently data point is Experian and credit score in the 620 pluses. So you're sitting here wondering, wow, so how am I supposed to apply for these beginner credit cards? And they're already requiring 700 credit score. Well, I have a video that teaches you about your credit profile and how you can go out there and thicken it up and do all the right things that you need to do to, um, better ha to have a better credit profile. Um, I even have a video on how to get a pledge loan. A pledge loan is not only done by the Navy Federal Credit Union. A pledge loan is also done by other uh, banks and credit unions. All you have to do is just Google it, banks that um, currently have pledge loans. And pledge loans, it basically is a way of manufacturing your credit score. Okay, But if you can't at that time, then just go ahead and apply for the Discover It, which is only requiring 620 plus um, on your credit score. And it pulls currently from Experian. So let's get into the six things to not do when you are a beginner when it comes to your credit card. You don't want to apply for too many credit cards at once, okay? Don't get that shiny penny syndrome where you have to have a credit card and you're getting all these letters in the mail saying 0% APR and just slow down. Six to 12 months should be the time frame in between your credit cards when you're beginning okay, before you apply for your next credit cards. Because hard inquiries and soft inquiries, well, soft inquiries don't hurt, but hard inquiries do definitely hurt your credit score as well, okay? The second thing you don't want to do is getting the wrong cards early in your credit card journey. And what I mean by that is if you are a young adult, you're starting, 
you want to start with a major credit card, such as Discover, a MasterCard, or a Visa. You don't want to get ahead and get started with one of these Capital One credit cards or this Credit One credit card, because what's going to happen is your credit profile is going to be tagged as um, subprime. And what that means is that you're going to be limited when you apply for other credit cards, even though you're building your credit, but because you have these subprime credit cards, you will not get those high limit credit cards that, that you're looking for, like the 5,000, 10,000, 15, 20, 25,000 credit limit, because you have those credit cards that are the wrong ones. Okay. So keep that in mind when it's too easy to get a $500 credit card, it's because it's a subprime. Also, Another thing you do not want to do as soon as you get these beginner credit card is maxing out your credit card. The utilization is super important when it comes to your credit score. It's a big part of your credit score. So you need to make sure that whatever you charge to your credit card, you make sure you pay it off every month, even if you have a 0% APR. Okay. Utilization must be down to at least three to 7%. Number four, not treating your credit card as cash, meaning that you're charging up everything in sight, knowing good and well that you don't have the money to pay for it in cash. If you can't pay for it in cash, don't use your credit card, okay? Because again, you need to pay off your credit cards in full every month. That is what you want to get into. Number five is a 0% APR offers. Um, use those wisely. You, you have to know when when the 0% APR ends. So therefore you should have it in your calendar. You should have it in your phone because what happens is, is that's how a lot of people get caught up. They charge, charge, charge. Oh, I have a whole year to pay for this. Next thing you know, the year is up and they still have a big balance on their card. And now they're going to be charged 26 and 27% interest. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the 0% APR. And number six, Closing a no annual fee credit card. Okay. Don't close an annual fee, a no annual fee credit card, because what you're doing is you're closing on your history. What's happening is remember part of your credit report and part of your credit score is your credit history. It's payments on time, your utilization, your inquiries, your uh, definitely your um, history. You want to make sure that your history if you close a credit card that you no longer use, just make just leave it on there. Don't close it. Um, only because you're going to be closing the time frame and the history that you had on it. Now, if the credit card, you just opened it up and it's just $500 and it's not doing anything for you, then by all means, close it. But if it has a long history, a lengthy history, do not close it because it's going to affect your credit score. Okay. So again, five credit cards. We're talking about the Built MasterCard, the Bank of America Preferred Rewards Program, the City Custom Cash, Chase Freedom Flex, and last but not least, Discover It. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. And make sure you comment if you have any suggestions or recommendations to my channel. Thank you.